Hello, I'm CJ Willerman. Please subscribe to our channel. Now let's get into it. US-based social media platforms have long been a hostile place for Muslims. And you only have to recall the pivotal role Facebook played in fueling the Rohingya genocide in 2017 and how WhatsApp mobilizes lynch mob attacks against Muslims in India to understand that. But things are about to get measurably worse for Muslims, Palestinians and Kashmiris on social media platforms in the coming months if the powerful Israeli lobby gets its way. And to be perfectly honest, we at the CJ Whirlman Show are genuinely concerned YouTube will soon remove content from our channel. After all, YouTube has already banned our channel in India at the direction of the Indian government because we expose the Hindu nationalist regime's human rights abuses against Muslims. But the source of our concern is this. Israel has pressured the United States State Department, along with several European governments, including the UK, into adopting a definition of anti-Semitism that's meant to shield Israel from legitimate criticism over its human rights violations against Palestinians. Which is why Israel is now celebrating. And this bringing me now to our next headline, United States Secretary of State Anthony Blinken enthusiastically embracing the IHRA's working definition of anti-Semitism on behalf of the United States and the Biden administration. The Israel lobby is now pressuring the United Nations to also adopt this definition of anti-Semitism, which opens the door to accusing anyone who criticizes Israel to be anti-Semitic, which of course is totally absurd, because criticizing the Chinese government's human rights abuses in East Turkestan does not make you a racist against Chinese people, and neither does criticizing the Saudi government make you an Islamophobe. Everyone, including non-Muslims, should be outraged by this Israel-orchestrated attack on free speech. Because if we don't stop the UN from adopting the Zionist definition of anti-Semitism, then it's likely social media companies, including YouTube, will adopt this definition too. If this happens, then our channel will disappear in the same way Palestinians are already being vanished from YouTube. You see, YouTube is owned by Google, a company that systematically silences Palestinian, Arab, and Muslim voices. And these are not my allegations. These are the allegations of Ariel Karim, a Jewish American who resigned from her senior position at Google because the company was not only silencing Palestinians, but also helping the Israeli military carry out mass surveillance in the occupied Palestinian territories. Google and Amazon are providing cloud services and powerful technology to fuel Israeli apartheid violence to profit off of Israeli apartheid violence and to aid the Israeli government in scaling out systemic abuses of Palestinian human rights, including surveillance and displacement of Palestinian families from their homes. And she's not alone. In fact, dozens of current Google employees have spoken out anonymously to condemn the company's bias towards Israel and its billion dollar projects with the Israeli military. Countless employees have tried to speak out about the violations the Palestinians have endured and have been intentionally ignored. So when opaque military contracts arise like Project Nimbus, it makes me feel like I am working for the bad guy. It has become impossible to express any opinion of disagreement of the war waged on Palestinians without being called into an HR meeting with the threat of retaliation. Last month, Fatima Muhammad became the latest Palestinian American to be vanished from YouTube after she gave a speech during her graduation ceremony at the City University of New York School of Law. Draped in the famous Palestinian Cafe, she spoke about how she and her classmates chose the school to attain the legal skills needed to confront systems of oppression and apply the law consistently. Israel continues to indiscriminately rain bullets and bombs on worshippers, murdering the old, the young, attacking even funerals and graveyards as it encourages lynch mobs to target Palestinian homes and businesses as it imprisons its children, as it continues its project of settler colonialism, expelling Palestinians from their homes, carrying the ongoing Nakba that are silent is no, that our silence is no longer acceptable. Just hours after the graduation ceremony, the video of her speech vanished from the school's YouTube page because of external pressure applied by Zionist groups. But of course, none of this comes as a surprise to Palestinians who have been complaining about being censored on social media platform for years. Turning now to Palestinian journalists and activists and the twin inescapable realities of surveillance and censorship. 
Since 2015, the authorities in Israel have arrested an estimated 1,000 Palestinians for content they published or shared online. And while all of this is going on, Israelis are using social media platforms such as WhatsApp and Telegram to incite violence against Palestinians and to coordinate actual physical attacks against them. We have observed groups of extremist Israelis are organizing and mobilizing themselves on different social media platforms such as WhatsApp and, and Telegram to incite against Arabs and Palestinians. They are coordinated, coordinating themselves and their attacks against Palestinians in the cities like Haifa, like Jaffa, like Lid. But these social media companies never censor or remove anti-Palestinian content because these companies are primarily operated in the United States and therefore tend to reflect US foreign policy preferences, which is why Israelis, white supremacists and Hindu nationalists can freely post hateful stuff about Muslims online, whereas Muslim accounts are banned for retaliating against them. For instance, my YouTube channel and Twitter account has been banned in India for exposing hate crimes committed against Muslims by Hindu nationalists. But the same people who commit these crimes are never banned or suspended. I mean, right now, there are literally thousands of YouTube channels that promote hatred and incite violence against Muslims in India and Kashmir, as we've revealed in previous episodes. So when you piece all of this together, you are left with only one dangerous conclusion, that US-based social media companies are leaving Palestinians, Kashmiris, and Muslim minorities totally exposed to discrimination and violence. This promises to escalate quickly into a catastrophic situation. Because if these same social media companies adopt the Israeli lobby's definition of anti-Semitism, then you can be sure the Hindu lobby will pressure YouTube and Meta into adopting its absurd definition of Hindu phobia, which of course is designed to silence criticism of the Indian government. Every human rights activist should be jumping up and down with their hair on fire right now, because persecuted and repressed Muslim populations are too often ignored by the mainstream media. Therefore, Social media platforms provide a lifeline to Palestinians, Kashmiris and Muslim minorities because they are a tool to share evidence of crimes committed against them. So if you take social media away from these groups, then their persecution will occur in total darkness, which is exactly what Israel and India are hoping to achieve here. We must all come together to protest against the Israel lobby's definition of anti-Semitism because if it's adopted by the United Nations, then that will be the start of a long and slippery slope. Anyway, that's my time for today. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and we kindly ask you please support this endeavor by becoming a member of this show at patreon.com slash CJ Wellerman. We can't produce, sustain and grow this show without your help and we offer exclusive benefits to those who do. But for now, good night, good morning, wherever you are and stay blessed.